to Wallington filming. Your host, the candle man. Log burners, multi-fuel burners. If you're one of those unfortunate ones who didn't think about buying a burner with a back boiler, you're in the same boat as me. <clears throat> now then, when you buy a burner with a back boiler, you've got that option of getting it all plumbed in uh, to your central heating system so you can um, basically put your fire on and it'll be connected to all your radiators in your house, possibly your hot water as well. So when this is like up and running, um, all your radiators in your house are getting nice and warm and warming those far away rooms in your house that this does, doesn't seem to reach. One of the disadvantages of getting one with a back boiler is to have all that plumbed into your central heating system and you possibly get, got to get a tank so it heats a tank full of hot water. That's not cheap. But what alternative is that if you haven't bought one with a back boiler? Well, I think I'd come up with a little bit of a solution. For example, in this terrace house, I've got the kitchen behind the camera there, this room and another room, and it'll heat the old downstairs up lovely. Because I'm using the actual chimney in this terraced house for what it was designed for, and that's not, I've not got a, a liner going up there, right, all that heat goes up the chimney, right, and as it was back in the day, you'd have this going up, the heat goes up the chimney as well, obviously, that, that, that lost heat, but it's not exactly 100% lost, because what it does, it heats the bricks up in your chimney from right down here, right up to, to your chimney pot. All them bricks inside that chimney get hot, and you'll find that heat radiating through the other chimney breasts when you go into the bedrooms which are above this. Um, the only room that I fail to get a lot of heat into is the bathroom which is over the kitchen, which is the furthest room away from this, the, from this centre room. The bedrooms upstairs do get a bit of heat from this coming through the brickwork and through the plaster. Uh, if you fill the chimney breasts upstairs in this bedroom above here, um, you, you, you can feel the heat coming from the bricks. And that's how they used to do it back in the day. But I've got that bathroom and I need to get some heat in there. What do I do? Good question. And in this video, I'm going to show you what, I, what lengths I've gone to to get heat from here into that bathroom in the form of using vents. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, vents. They used to have them back in the day, didn't they? Oh, hey. On this ceiling here, uh, behind the camera, what I've got, I've got a vent that I've made in the ceiling, under the floor, going into the bathroom, and it's, uh, it, it's going to incorporate tubing and a little fan which will be on like a dimmer control so I can lower the fan and um, get some heat into the bathroom. So I'm not going to slobber on no more. Enjoy the video and see how I've gone about using a, a venting system in the, in the ceiling in this room so heat from this room goes in to my bathroom or using vents in in this room where the heat rises going into other rooms in the house uh, whether you can see it behind me but i could put a vent in any part any corner of this room lift the floor up and have heat going into separate rooms via a venting system right where hot air from this goes up to the ceiling and into other rooms so stick around and see how i went about it Enjoy. Right, so the general plan is to take this um, Victorian style vent, which is made out of plaster of Paris or whatever they make the coven out of, you know what I mean? There it is. 
there. Get that there. And place it up there. So what you got there, you see, you got the door there. So upstairs is the bathroom door, just above there. Right, so the plan is, use this vent to cover the hole that's gonna go there. And with the heat rising, it should go through the vent and into the bathroom. So, theoretically, <laughs> Theoretically, that's going to go something like that. Uh, I do believe that's about the smallest vent to do, so we'll have to try it. At least it uh, goes with the Victorian coving, right? So there's going to be there's going to be a hole behind that going into a pipe into the bathroom. So let me show you what I'm talking about there. Right, so here's the bathroom. It's the only room that's quite a distance away from the log burner or multi-fuel burner. And the bathroom is always bloody freezing cold. Me being the target, not wanting to put the central heating on because I've got a better, better source of heat, I want to get the heat from downstairs. So you've got a corridor here. So it gets hot up, it gets hot round there, it gets warm round there, yeah. But here, the bathroom stays cold because these old toast houses are not insulated that well, do you know what I mean? So, theoretically, that vent should be somewhere around there. That's where I'm going to add the vent. I'm actually going to use... One of these... I'm actually going to use one of these flexible um, pipes for the back of the toilet. You know what I mean? So you can do whichever way. Obviously, I'm going to have to silicon it down or something. So that's going to go in the hole and the ceiling down in, in the other room. Hot air will rise, go through the pipe. I'm going to insulate the pipe, obviously, so it don't lose any heat. Now, I'm not expecting it to blow into the bathroom, but just like a... a, a, a a steady flow of like warmer air going into the bathroom you should take the chill off the bathroom, not expecting it to get baking up. So that's going to be that. So I've got to lift that carpet up there. Then, what I'm going to do, I've also bought one of these Victorian cast iron vents, reproduction obviously, you see what I mean? Now, just bear in mind with this, I don't, I'm not sure how these work, but I don't think these plates are supposed to stay on. Um, because what happens is you'll drill your hole through there. That will allow, that will allow for that to go a little bit like that. Take the plate off. Otherwise, as you can see, Okay, that bit in the middle is going to be in the hole where the vent is, hopefully. But them little metal bits stick out. It's going to give you a problem to screw it on. There. So that's going to come through that step in the bathroom and hopefully kick out a little bit of warm air. Whether I need to put a fan behind the other vent on the ceiling, at a later point, I don't know, I might have to, we'll see how it goes. We'll see if it actually does anything. But that's the plan. But yeah, I think we need to end metal things off and then that allow that to screw flush to there and then just leave it open, obviously. You know what I mean? So that day, that's my plan. <laughs> Whether it works or not, is anybody's guess. Right, so first thing I'm, I've got to do is pull that carpet back. Now I've had all this floor up down here before, so it's already caught where to lift the, the, the original um, floorboards up because I, I did all the bathroom, so, uh, and redid all the step. But I do remember putting some, some brick 
behind there that we're missing. So I'm going to have to drill. So I, I've got the kit to do it. Uh, the only thing I might need to nip and get is some silicon because you know what it's like when you've got everything. I can't find it. So yeah, let me get this carpet up and see what the crack is. First things you need to do is check that there's no pipes running under these uh, floorboards or any wiring. So that's why I'm cutting these two out. So I can make sure and I can see there's nothing running under that before we start doing this, otherwise you're going to be in trouble. As you can see, I've got this floor up here. Now I want the vent to come somewhere, anywhere down there, it don't matter. But I've got wires there. So it's gonna to have to go somewhere there. Uh, and then you've got these rafters going across. Joyce, whatever. You've got the and you've got these going across here. So, what I need to do now is go downstairs, find out where I roughly want the vent, drill a small hole through to see where I'm at. Because ideally, I don't want to come through that, go through that, and go through that. But I will if I have to. So yeah, let's check it out. Right then, that's where I've drilled through that I roughly wanted the um, vent, but where it's come out is not ideal. Right, so I've cleaned all the floor around there and <laughs> look, that's where it's come through, which is not ideal. So I'm gonna have to bring the vent out from where that is. So it falls somewhere just there. So I'm gonna to have to drill through here uh, when they decide uh, if this pipe's gonna fit through. And now I've got to get through that bloody thing. Oh, you fighter. So yeah, let me check it out and see what I'm gonna do with it. <laughs> oh, that's the progress so far. Uh, obviously, I've got wood there. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I tell you what, uh, it's the hardest bit getting getting a hole through there. Right then, I've managed to cut all the way through. Now, bear in mind, um, I've not got all the ideal kit to do it. Realistically, that hole there is sixty just over 60 mil. It's a bit smaller than that. Now then, I can get a pipe to go through there, 60 mil, order it online. But what I need to do is get one of them that's 60 mil wide. So, cause I'll have to go through brick there and then get an extension bar for this. So I can cut through that piece of timber there. All that under there is brick. I'll just show you. Yeah, so I've gone, hold on. I've gone all the way through, but it's actually good at a smaller hole because I ain't got all the correct kit. Ideally, if I knew what we're doing in the first place, I would have gone out and bought it, but I can still, Correct it. If I've got a 60, about 60 mil one of them, um, I can get through the brick and an extension bar for that. I can get through there just by a bit of pipe, which will just slot into that. Oh, ideally, if I had that width 
of drill bits I could have drilled straight away and that that going all the way through that's just a fraction too big that is about 63 65 mil that is I could have gone straight through with that all the way to where it bends there obviously that'll go in front of that but it'll only be using one side of the vent I don't know how much warm air is going to come through it but the, you must get some heat rises doesn't it so it's going to go through that and through the pipe oh, ideally I suppose you want a fan on it right this is where I've got up to so far <clears throat> drilled that hole through there um, I mean ideally I needed a cutter same width as the uh, same width as the uh, pipe <laughs> I haven't, so there you go, not to worry. Um, so I put that in. That's in place. All I've got to do is just silicon round there. That's quite tight. So silicon round there, and I need a bit of pipe coming like so. With a bend on. Uh, going to somewhere around there. So what I need to do now He's gonna fetch a bloody bend because I don't know where mine are, so I know exactly where I've got to cut it. It's a bit of a bummer, isn't it? Hey, but yeah, coming on, that's the general thing. Well, it's gonna work or not, I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to see. Right it? then, I've just drilled that hole straight through the ceiling, as you can see. Hey, <laughs> your geese, oh. Uh, been out and bought that 90 degree um, bend cut the pipe and that goes basically that's going to go like so it's like that like that uh, I have looked online and you can get 60 mil uh, 240 uh, fans so if I feel it's not doing anything, I can take that pipe out. They're like computer fans. Stick a pipe there, uh, wire a plug in there, and put it on a timer to come on, like at night and stuff like that, or whenever. Uh, because, unless I put like a plug on the wall or something there, could do that, I suppose. But yeah, that's the crap. I'm gonna get the vent screwed on underneath now. Yeah, so there it is. That's where the fan's gonna go. Um, I don't know this ceiling replastered, really but um, it's starting to. It, it's a bit loose there, so I've got to be dead careful. But yeah, I'm gonna get that up now. Right, then got the vent on. Only screwed it on at the minute. Not to put any silicon uh, behind it to give it that extra grip. Bear in mind, two of the screws are not actually screwing in and into anything, so I am going to have to put some silicon behind it and fill the holes. But yeah, that's how it looks so far. I think it looks alright, to be honest. I mean, it's obvious it's a vent, but I think you used to do these type of things, didn't you? Back in the day, do you know what I mean? Picture's a bit grainy, it's getting dark now. But yeah, there you go. What's that? Right then, yeah, back upstairs, there's the vent. Not many holes, and no, I, I have got a feeling I'm gonna have to put some sort of little fan in there. Well, in that section there, I think. Um, There's the screws, I might get a bit of PVA on them um, laths, stick a bit of two B1 on it so it's got something to screw on. Uh, the other ones are alright, that's going through the lath. So is that. So just a case of getting that there and silicon it on, I think. So I'm going to crack on with that. I put that um, pipe work in there, siliconed it all in. So that's quite nice and secure. Uh, I put that in and siliconed it in. But 
even with the room downstairs having shit loads of heat in it, I'm getting absolutely nothing coming through there whatsoever. That's just fitted on there temporary. Um, I have got to put the, the other bit in and everything, but I just wanted to see what the crap was. But yeah, again, no heat coming through. So, what I've decided to do, I just pulled that out because uh, it's, it's just not doing anything. So I've got one of these circulating fans. Um, that you have in your bathrooms. You normally have them up on the wall, don't you, going outside to let the smell of poo-poo out. <laughs> uh, right, so, anyway. I've had it plugged in, it all works, but because that fan spins around at such a high speed, it, any air that it drags in, whether it's warm or hot or whatever, it's going to cool it down. So, I've just been on eBay, and you can actually buy like a regulator thing, like a dimmer switch, which will literally slow that right down. So it, it will circulate it without cooling it down. That's why I'm hoping. Uh, and they're only about 15 quid. It's got all digital readout on it and everything. Looks like a banging better kit. So I'm gonna get that. I'm just debating whether I can cut this off and just get the fan out or do something instead of having that great big thing there and then it's got to go i'm going to put it here and then put that pipe there connecting to that old air and that should do it theoretically when i get the uh the dimmer the dimmer switch the regulator thing slow the speed down to the fan so yeah that's where i've got up to so far this is what i ended up doing uh we'll start off with that Got that bend in there with that bit of pipe there, all siliconed in. Uh, then we have the bathroom uh, circulating fan or extractor fan. Uh, I did have to cut that off at the top because it was just a little bit too high, uh, but it allowed me to screw it on and back to silicon round the edges. Quite difficult to get at the bottom uh, and screw them in. There's a couple of holes there, but I did fill the holes with silicon. I ended up putting the two by one in there and, hold on, on the other side, just to push that bottom in and then I siliconed up down the edges. So I had to check this board off here. Uh, this is your, straight connector for the back of a toilet there you go in case you need to get one of them and like i say that's the extractor fan that goes in the bathroom just two wires coming off it there live and neutral i should say into there with a plug going on that and uh, yeah it does work it does work um i'll just give you an example it's not that loud either Can hear that, can't you? Then it comes in the vent there, which I've blacked off, took it off, sanded it down, blacked off there. It's only coming through that section there, but it can close off. Can close it off. Like that. So let me just give you an example. Look, bit of paper. That's it blown out, look. Move it away. Hold on, let's put it there, look. See it blowing it out. Comes there, blows it out. Yeah, so it does work. Um, it's not bad. Depends how much heat you got downstairs, I think. You can feel it coming out. It's not hot, or but it, it's like lukewarm. So my plan now is I've ordered online one of these um, regulators like dimmer switches for the power supply, which will slow the fan down. 
because uh, obviously, like any fan, if it's spinning dead quick, it's going to cool the air down. So if it's going slower, it's still going to drag the air in, but not cool it down. So I've ordered one of them, and then I'm going to put a timer on it as well. So, you know, it sort of comes on at night when I've got the fire on, and have it running all the way through the night so it warms the, the, the bathroom up, like, do you know what I mean? Or just put just takes a chill off so that's the plan so when I get the regulator and the plug so I've got to put a plug there so it's on a timer regulator to slow the fan down which is dead easy basically put the uh, regulator in uh, that plug goes into the regulator or dimmer and then it's got a plug on that which goes into another plug which will have a timer on it um, you could, I was thinking of dragging the wire all the way under the floor into that bedroom so you could have access to the timer and everything, but I'm going to do it like this so far. Yeah, I could feel that, you see. I could feel that air coming out there. And it is re reasonably, there is a bit of warmth there. But you've got to make sure you seal all the gaps up. The good thing about this, it's got a rubber seal, but when you if you cut down this or anything, or even that pipe there, make sure it's sealed up. It's got to like completely seal up. Yeah, so that's how it is so far, and uh, just waiting for the the dimmer or the regulator, whatever you want to call it. Now, it's been a couple of weeks now, and I've received the uh, regulator to slow the fan down. So. What I'm going to do now is just basically show you what I've been up to. Slight change of plan on the location for the uh, regulator and the timer and everything that controls the fan. So what I've basically done is connected all the uh, power cable to the uh, fan that's underneath that floor. Um, in the end, what I did, I ran the cable next to the gripper rod right under the carpet then i've got this mirror here that hides a cupboard and what i've done is run the cable right around the carpet uh underneath that bit of skirting board into the cupboard oh <laughs> line witch in the wardrobe a uh, full of junk i know but just ignore that so the cable goes underneath comes up here and there it all is, beautiful. <laughs> so you got the cable running for, from the fan up here into the regulator box. Then you've got the power for that plug running all the way down through that bit of wall uh, just there. Um, so it's on the timer. Uh, so I can set the, the timer so it comes on at certain times and goes off at certain times. Got myself a spare plug there. Um, regulator plugs into the power, obviously. And there's your fan under the floor. I have actually got it set on about, yeah, just, it, it sometimes fluctuates from about 169, 170, 71 on there. That's how you control the speed. Bear in mind, it is made in bloody China or Taiwan or something, as you can tell. But it does work. It does work. Uh, you can switch it on and off there. The only um, manufacturing sort of thing I don't like about this is that connection where the plug goes in is a little bit loose. I have had it opened all up and it's just the way it fixes uh the the plug actually fixes to the metal mount um it's not going to come off or anything but that's just a little bit taiwan-ified isn't it you know what i mean but yeah you've got a nice readout there uh you can control it on the timer whether you want it on timer or or on permanently but yeah it does work and there it all is uh like i said originally i was going to put that lot somewhere else but i decided to put it there out of the way and I've got full access to it which is a big bonus as well so yeah there you go 
that's about it guys it's all done it all works it does blow um air through the vent which is just down here and it is it is slightly warm um i know i have found on about that sort of setting 170 it's just about right it's about probably about the lowest i can get it to be fair without um it switching off but um it, yeah it works now the only question you want to ask yourself is um does it warrant having that fan on from let's say six o'clock at night till six in the morning is it going to make any difference that would probably be up to you to decide uh, and is it worth using that electric for that little bit of heat or should you just put the bloody central heating on do you know what i mean so yeah it's all debatable but it, it all works and um, it, if you after getting some free heat in a room that's a bit further away that might be worth considering so yeah that's about it guys hope you have enjoyed the journey to get some free heat into a certain room in your house using your log burner so from yours truly uh, hope you've enjoyed the video don't forget to like subscribe and share until next time, from the one, the only, Candleman. Stay safe, guys. Stay safe. <laughs>